A very warm welcome everybody to the first in our third webinar series for the Impact Research Group at UEA. My name is Carrie Jackson and I'm one of the directors of the Impact Research Group and an Associate Professor for Practice Transformation. This third webinar series runs from April through to July and uh, I'm delighted today to be able to welcome my colleagues Patrick and Adam from the Cambridgeshire and Peterborough Adopting Innovation Hub um, who are going to be talking to you about the work of the hub and the project. So the Cambridgeshire and Peterborough Adopting Innovation Hub is one of four hubs funded nationally by the Health Foundation the hubs are going to be working with system partners to promote the adaptation and adoption of proven innovation with a focus on addressing health inequalities. The session today is going to introduce the hub and its goals, as well as talking about the role of the RAND Europe uh, group as the evaluation partner and UEA's impact research group. So Patrick joined the Adopting Innovation Hub as hub lead in February of uh, this year from a previous role in the Cambridgeshire and Peterborough Health Innovation Ecosystem, where he worked across Cambridge and Peterborough Foundation Trust and Cambridge University Health Partners as business engagements and clinical innovation manager. Uh, Patrick has previous experience of academic and pharmaceutical research as well as healthcare consulting and holds a master's degree and a PhD in chemistry. And I'm delighted also to welcome Adam Chiesa, who is the Cambridgeshire and Peterborough Adopting Innovation Hub Coordinator. So in just a tick, I'm going to hand directly over to Patrick. We would welcome, please, you all keeping your cameras off and your microphones, please, on mute for the duration of this session. The session is being recorded and will appear on our YouTube channel afterwards and we will send you a link to the presentation. We'll also be asking you to post questions in the chat box and Adam and Patrick are going to share links to some key documents that we would like uh, to share with you. So without further ado, I'm going to go off camera for a little bit and hand over to Patrick. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Carrie. Hopefully everyone can see my screen and can hear me OK. Yes. Great. Fantastic. Thanks, Emily. Thanks a lot for, for joining today. It's really great to see such a fantastic turnout for this webinar series to introduce the Cambridgeshire and Peterborough Adopting Innovation Hub. Like Carrie mentioned, I'm Patrick and I'm the hub lead for the Cambridgeshire and Peterborough Adopting Innovation Hub. I'm really looking forward to telling you a bit more about this exciting new initiative that we have across the county. Over the course of this presentation, I'll talk you through the background to the programme. We'll then go on to discuss the evaluation approach for our hub, as well as for the broader programme. Um, and this section will feature a short introductory video from Tom Ling, who is head of evaluation at RAND Europe, the national evaluators for the Adopting Innovation programme. We'll then go on to hear from Carrie from the Impact Research Group about their contribution and their work in evaluating our hub. The Adopting Innovation Programme is funded by the Health Foundation and will run for two years to support four innovation hubs across the country. The programme officially launched in February of 2022. Any discussion of innovation really raises the question of how we define innovation. And for the sake of this program, the Health Foundation considers innovation to refer to new approaches, practices, treatments, technologies, and services that aim to improve healthcare. We're really excited by this definition because it allows us to look beyond purely digital and technological solutions to also include changes to treatment pathways and the way that we deliver clinical services. The Adopting Innovation Programme is informed by a report published by the Health Foundation in 2018 titled The Spread Challenge, and Adam will be sharing a link to this document in the chat. This white paper concludes that the adoption of proven innovation in the healthcare system presents a significant bottleneck, and critically, that innovations have to be adapted to their local context to ensure maximum impact. 
The Adopting Innovation Programme accordingly looks to address this challenge and all four hubs will focus on supporting their local health and care systems in implementing proven interventions. Adoption has also been identified as a local challenge in Cambridgeshire and Peterborough through stakeholder engagement work and innovation case studies that we conducted with Cambridge University Health Partners, our local academic health science centre. Beyond the core focus of adopting innovation, the four hubs have the freedom to set priorities in line with their local needs. And I'll highlight these on a later slide, but for now I'll talk you through the priorities of the Cambridgeshire and Peterborough hub. Given the stark health inequalities across Cambridge and Peterborough, our hub will focus on innovations that can address these core inequalities and where possible raise the standard of care for all. We also recognise the importance of co-producing transformation work with our citizens and with clinicians, and we're embedding co-production across all aspects of the hub's activity. Finally, we also have a very keen interest in understanding our workforces and our system's attitude to innovation, and we will work to support a positive shift in culture through educational offerings and by exploring incentive structures. And again, I'll touch on this a little bit later on in the presentation. This slide provides a very high level overview of some of the local priorities of the three other hubs in the National Adopting Innovation Programme. Bradford and Craven is focusing on the Ageing Well agenda and similarly to our hub is also looking to address health inequalities across the local community. The Dorset Innovation Hub is looking more generally at the adoption of innovation with a specific focus on scaling up. And finally, the Manchester Hub is looking at digital interventions as an initial exemplar. All four hubs are drawing on strong partnerships from across the local ecosystem. The Cambridgeshire and Peterborough Hub is positioned as a resource for the entire integrated care system and is drawing on partnerships from within and beyond this system. Collaborators include healthcare providers such as acute centres, community and mental health trusts and primary care, and also include public engagement organisations, local authorities, academic institutions and innovation bodies. The hub is hosted by Cambridge and Peterborough NHS Foundation Trust, which is our community and mental health trust. I'll next walk you through our hubs model, including the eight enablers that we've put in place to support our work. The core hub team will comprise three full-time roles who are responsible for driving and coordinating all key activity. Adam, who's on the call today, as well as myself, have both been in place since February as hub coordinator and hub lead, respectively. We're also currently in the process of recruiting to a senior administrator post. Adam will again share the link to this opportunity in the chat in case anyone on the call is interested or knows somebody else who might be. As already stated, co-production really lies at the core of our approach at the hub. We've worked with PPI partners and third sector organisations to distribute an advert for our citizen participation group, which will help to inform both our strategic vision as well as co-producing our needs identification and innovation selection work. We're really excited to have seen great and diverse applications from across the county and we will be interviewing applicants next week. Adam will also share the link to this opportunity in the chat in case it's of interest to anyone on the call today. We've also commissioned a digital community engagement platform to interact more broadly with the public and healthcare staff across the region. The page is currently being developed and launches on course for the end of April. We're excited to be able to share this page with you soon, but we're also really conscious of the chance of digitally excluding key groups. So as a result, all of our online engagement activity will be supplemented with alternative engagement approaches to ensure that we are inclusive um, to all groups, regardless of their access and ability to use digital tools. We recognise that a dynamic communication strategy will be really essential in driving engagement across groups and in actively informing our partner organisations of ongoing opportunities. To this end, we've established social media profiles and a homepage and links to partners communication teams are currently being developed to help actively engage with our stakeholders. We're also exploring providers of easy read materials to ensure that our outreach activities are as inclusive as possible. 
our hub has a core small core team and we really need to draw on our networks and our partner organizations to deliver our goals of supporting the adoption of innovation to address health inequalities in order to firmly anchor the hub within our innovation ecosystem we're proposing a model of hub link workers these individuals are existing employees at our partner organizations and will dedicate time to interfacing with the hub and signposting to internal opportunities Given our focus on culture change, we will establish a community of learning currently called the Innovation Culture Club. We'll deliver educational content such as sand pits and workshops to introduce and advocate for innovation adoption across our citizens and our workforce, drawing on the expertise of our networks. And I'll go into some of the types of events that we're hoping to run at the end of this presentation. We recognize that buy-in from leadership across the healthcare system is critical to the success and to the sustainability of our hub. To this end, the hub is creating a leadership concordat, which will outline the expected support and commitment from partners. We also recognize the need to dovetail with existing system work around health inequalities, as well as clinical delivery and innovation. We've accordingly engaged actively with relevant ICS boards and working groups over the past two months to develop an approach that meets the system's needs. Cambridgeshire and Peterborough is home to a large number of experienced adopters from across the healthcare and private sector workforces and has a really vibrant and well-developed innovation ecosystem. We've established an adopters network to draw on this experience and to support the hub in addressing systemic challenges to innovation. The core group is now in place and the inaugural meeting took place a few weeks ago. This group of adopters will help to inform our strategic direction as a hub and the members of the network will also buddy with clinical teams on individual innovation projects to share their learnings and to help navigate challenges associated with the implementation of new interventions. Finally, we also have an evaluation panel in place who will work with our evaluation partners here at the Impact Group. The panel consists of members from across the Hubs partnership, and I'll go into a bit more detail about the relationship in the evaluation section of the talk. I think it's always nice to put some faces to names, and this slide shows the makeup of our, our different Hub teams across both leadership and the core team. The leadership team consists of Ewan Cameron, who is the Executive Director of Improvement and Transformation at Cambridge University Hospitals, Helen Oliver, who is Deputy Chief Executive at Eastern Academic Health Science Network, and Kathy Walsh, who is the Deputy Medical Director at our host organisation, CPFT. I've already introduced Adam and my own roles within the Core Hub team, and as mentioned, we are currently recruiting to a Senior Administrator for the Hub as well. Our evaluation panel that I introduced on the last slide is currently being chaired by Professor Peter Jones, who's director at the East of England Applied Research Collaboration. And another really critical role that we will be recruiting to in future is the citizen leader position. This citizen role will represent our citizen participation group at leadership meetings and will be co-selected by the group itself. Our goals for the upcoming months are threefold. Firstly, we're conducting extensive needs identification work to understand the clinical areas and the health inequalities that the hub will target in line with system priorities. Current front runners include cardiovascular disease and obesity, as well as serious mental illness. We will also look to identify those innovations that are proven to target these challenges and that are suitable for spread. Our second aim is to aid a positive culture shift across our workforce driven by the delivery of interactive sessions through the Innovation Culture Club. Key areas that we've been asked to focus on by our partners include providing a practical guide to evaluation for clinical teams and highlighting the importance of health economics when considering innovation. We will also highlight case studies drawing on the experiences of our adopters network. Finally, our third focal point will be to run workshops across the partnership to identify and share successful local innovations that have a low barrier to entry, looking to capitalize on the great work that's already ongoing within the system and the broader network of adopting innovation hubs. Coming back to that initial needs identification process, 
this slide highlights the four steps that we will take in trying to identify our needs. Firstly, we'll look to dovetail with existing system priorities, drawing on resources such as the Core 20 plus 5 model for health inequality developed by NHS England. Once key priority themes have been agreed, we'll co-produce specific challenge statements within these themes with citizens and clinicians. We'll then work with our academic health science network to identify relevant innovations that are proven, well-evidenced and suitable for spread, and we'll co-produce our final selection. Finally, we'll um, take this selection back to our system and provider leadership to ensure that we can secure support and sign off for the innovations that we've selected and identified. This final section outlines the evaluation landscape of our hub and the adopting innovation program. Locally, the three relevant stakeholders are the hub itself, our evaluation partners here at the UEA Impact Group, as well as our evaluation panel. The panel will support clinical teams in evaluating individual implementation projects and will agree the evaluation brief, key performance indicators and metrics for the hub level evaluation with impact. Impact will in turn evaluate hub level performance and culture change and Carrie will go into a bit more detail on the team's approach in a couple of slides time. Importantly, this local evaluation model also interacts with the national evaluation of the adopting innovation program. At this level, key stakeholders include the innovation unit, who are the implementation support partners for the program, as well as RAND Europe, who are the national program evaluators. We're also really keen to share learnings from our evaluation with the other three hubs in the program to ensure that we spread best practice across the network. So if the technology allows, I'll now play a video by Tom Link, who will introduce RAND Europe's approach to evaluating the National Adopting Innovation Programme. Hello, my name is Tom Ling. And I'm part of the RAND team that is uh, doing the programme evaluation uh, for the Adopting Innovation Programme. And I'm here just to say a few words, give you a short introduction to the work of the evaluation team. And the programme evaluation that we will be leading will be, first of all, formative to support learning and adaptation. Secondly, it will be summative. We will arrive at conclusions about the value of the programme and the implications for the wider healthcare system. We will be collaborative in that we'll work very closely with the local evaluations, with the hubs, with the innovation unit and with the Health Foundation. Fourthly, we will be informed by adopting a theory of change approach and an understanding of systems. And fifthly, we plan to be solution oriented. We really don't want to just admire the problem, but to be part of a collective effort with you uh, in order to address and solve the problems. There will be three levels to the programme, and this will be reflected in our evaluation. The first is at the level of the innovation or the individual project. And there the questions are, what changed as a result of the innovation? For whom? With what benefits? And as a result of, uh, and, and how did that actually take place? Was that the hubs that managed to support that? How did the hubs help prioritise and manage change in the local area? Secondly, we want to look at the hubs themselves and what makes for a successful hub and what resources and capacities uh, you need in order to deliver things that would not have happened in the absence of the hub. And we want to understand the consequences that that will have for, uh, the, for innovation systems at the local level. Thirdly, we want to look at the programme level and the role of the programme in supporting sustainable change and capturing uh, lessons, but also to understand if and how the programme has mobilised change beyond the individual role of the hubs into the wider health and care systems in England and Wales and indeed into Scotland and Northern Ireland. The different teams that will be involved 
The local evaluations will be leading very much around the local innovations themselves and the projects and looking at the effect and consequences of those. And they will also be working with us the programme level to look at the role of the hubs in delivering that change. So we will collaborate closely around that. And uh, we will take the lead in the programme evaluation, uh, which will be looking at the role of the programme, including importantly, the innovation unit and the health foundation in supporting sustainable change, capturing lessons and mobilising change into the wider health and care system. We are really looking forward to working with you in uh, the coming years, months and years, and we see this as a joint project of collective and shared learning, each with our own part to play in that. And uh, hopefully uh, over time we can capture a really deep understanding of how innovation takes place at local levels, how that can be supported, how adaptation of known innovations can succeed. And we look forward to working with you. Great, thanks a lot to Tom for providing that video on RAN's approach to the national evaluation of the Adopting Innovation program. So with that, I think I'll go off camera and hand over to Carrie, who will walk you through Hello. some of the outputs from and the approaches that Impact have been working on. Thanks, Carrie. Thanks very much, Patrick. Uh, and there's an interesting question from James Butcher in the chat, which we'll come back to a little bit later. Thanks, James. So uh, the Impact Research Group at UEA are focused, first of all, on helping to think about how we co-create an implementation and impact framework with citizens and stakeholders in Cambridgeshire and Peterborough for evaluating innovation, adoption and spread. Um, and that, we believe, will guide both future strategy, culture and evaluation of impact at different levels of the system. So when I'm talking about system levels, I'm talking about micro level, which is with teams, meso level with um, services or organisations, and then at macro level, the whole system. Um, and we think that's important because it positions citizens and what matters to them at the heart of health and social care innovation in partnership with stakeholders, which Patrick has already talked about. And we think it's really important to do this, to guide the evaluation focus from the perspective of both the internal process evaluation team and the external evaluation of the cultural factors that influence uptake and spread of adoption across the system. Next slide, please. Next slide, please, Patrick. So in order to do that, we're going to use what's called a, a values clarification uh, framework to guide the workshop. Um, and values clarification works with people's values and beliefs and enables us to focus down on what matters most to people, what they really value about innovation. Um, and it will enable us to develop a common understanding of the concept of innovation and its meaning to everyone that's involved. It allows us to get to the ultimate purpose of innovation as a collective and to identify how that purpose is going to be achieved across the system, what the enablers are, so identifying what works and rather than just focusing on the challenges and the barriers. So we're coming at this from a, a positive, appreciative approach. Um, it also enables us to identify ways of working and what needs to be put in place to enable a culture of innovation to happen successfully. So it focuses on the principles of shared governance and the relationships that are required to deliver on that ultimate purpose also helps us to identify what the indicators of success are going to be and then un any other things that matter to the people that are involved in those workshops. Next slide please. So the deliverables from this kind of first phase of work will be a shared understanding about innovation with all the citizens and stakeholders involved, a clear shared purpose and direction about the innovation focused on what matters most to people, 
The third is an implementation and impact framework that will guide the strategy, culture and evaluation based on what matters to people and the evidence base that we'll be using um, to actually identify impact. And then there will be a report which will specifically guide the focus of the process evaluation and the external evaluation as a result of that first workshop. Next slide, please. So our own role in this particular process is really taking an integrated approach to process evaluation, working with all our local evaluation partners, citizens and stakeholders, but is underpinned by a realist evaluation approach with co-creation of that shared understanding of what we mean and understand by innovation and the development of the implementation and impact framework with citizens, focused on what matters, in terms of developing an innovation culture, spread and adoption of innovations. It will involve critical ob observations of key meetings in relation to how particular the six uh, innovations are going to be adopted, what particular selection process has been used, and the implementation and impact framework will actually be used and applied to each of those six innovations. So we'll take a similar approach with six workshops once we know what the top innovations are going to be that citizens want to work with. Next slide, please. So from our perspective in terms of the process evaluation, we'll be using an appreciative approach using claims, concerns and issues tool, which is a fourth generation evaluation tool to identify what matters to stakeholders over time for each innovation being implemented and we'll also explore within that the cultural influences that are impacting on innovation and uh, spread of the innovation on adoption and innovation. We'll also use observations of practice um, in meetings, uh, both through the early adopters network and the culture club, and obviously be working with the steering group as well. We've got measured points at which six, 12 and 22 months into the process, we will be undertaking a preliminary analysis of the contextual factors and mechanisms linked to outcome and impact that are derived from all the data that we've collected with each independent innovation to generate a rough programme theory. And we'll analyse all of those data sets um, over time to refine the programme theory, testing it out as we go. And at 23 months, we'll have a workshop with citizens and all the stakeholders to critique those synthesised insights across all the innovations and data sets informing that programme theory, the contextual readiness factors that have influenced adoption and spread, and the mechanisms or activities that have most helped to facilitate a culture of innovation, adoption and spread. And then we'll obviously produce a report once we've revisited the implementation and impact frameworks. Uh, next slide, please. Earlier on, you heard uh, both Patrick and Tom talking about the different types of um, levels of evaluation. So we'll be helping to capture level one indicators so that it's the extent to which the activities or projects and innovations supported by the hub is successful and whether um, this is because of the innovation or the projects that were selected or because of other reasons. We'll also be looking at the role of principles in delivering these successfully, what other factors might have been driving success and whether or not the innovations have been cherry picked to find easy winners that create a false sense of confidence in the approach. Although we are confident that with the approach that we're taking being one very authentically embedded in co-production, that we'll um, have captured this journey uh, all the way along and told a very rich story of what's happening. Next slide, please. So I'm going back to you, Patrick, and uh, I'll invite the audience to uh, ask any questions that they would like in the chat. But Patrick and Adam, if you want to come on camera, I think it would be really helpful to have a discussion about James's question in relation to culture change, perhaps the three of us. Thanks very much. Thanks, Carrie. 
Um, so I think this is a really interesting question. And actually, it came up last week, didn't it, when we were um, in the launch event. Uh, and we've had discussions ourselves around how we measure culture change. Um, so Patrick and Adam, do you want to say a few words about what, you, what we're going to be doing next? And I can sort of chip in. I, th I think it's a great question, um, Carrie. Obviously, culture change is something that can seem quite abstract. So finding correct key performance indicators for that is, is a challenge. One aspect that we're looking to do to, to get to the bottom of that is to work with our evaluation panel and with impact so that we can agree on, on the types of metrics that we can use that, that can capture that culture change. We've done some extensive base, I'll stop sharing so that people can see us. Um, we've done some extensive baselining work as well with Cambridge University Health Partners around existing attitudes towards culture. So I think that's that's a really important starting point is to understand what perceptions with respect to innovation are as they stand. Um, and that will also help us to, to dig a little bit deeper into what those those metrics could be and the ways in which our cultural offerings might be able to to move the needle on on culture don't yeah. know if there's anything you'd like to add carrie yes yeah, so uh we've shared both with um patrick and adam so with the hub and also with the ran team and we've mentioned briefly i think in the national workshop last week that my own team's developed um, quite a lot of theory around culture change at three different levels of the system. Um, there is a paper that's been published, I'll, I'll put it in the chat, um, which is called the uh, Guiding Lights for Effective Workplace Cultures, that focuses on the sorts of uh, enablers, uh, activities and outcomes and impacts that you would expect to see at different levels of the system. We've also done quite a lot of work around the sorts of metrics that you might expect to see and who the beneficiaries of those will be. So we'll be revisiting those. I can see, Emily, thank you very much for putting that into the chat. Um, there's a paper on microsystems culture change, uh, which has also been published, which takes that a little bit further. Um, and so we're going to draw on that. But I think also the Dorset team um, have been working with the Paris framework and with complexity theory and normalisation theory to actually help them to map uh, both the influence of context and leadership uh, in terms of adoption and spread. Um, and for those of you on the call that are not familiar with normalisation theory, um, it enables you to map a uh, development journey over time. So it might be that leadership might be weak in particular areas at the start of a project and you may put um, some strategies in place to strengthen it. Um, and you might then see that there's improvements in innovation or sustainability in relation to a particular project over time. So it allows you to map that quite nicely in a, in a spider's web. So... Um, for me, the Dorset team have really thought about their um, kind of approach in terms of theory, but their focus is slightly different to ours. Um, and I know that there's a great interest in our colleagues in um, Bradford and Craven in looking at culture change. So I'm hoping that there'll be opportunities for us to share some of that experience together um, and look to see what might work um, in terms of metrics. Um, but a, a lot of a lot of culture change relies on the essential ingredients that we've talked about is that getting shared direction, shared purpose and clarity of roles and responsibilities right at the start, particularly when you're co-producing something is so crucial, um, because if you don't have that clarity, then uh, uh, people don't really know what their roles and responsibilities are in relation to what you're trying to achieve. So shared governance is a very important approach. So I think it's fair to say we have a meeting coming up, don't we, Patrick, in the next couple of weeks to really map out the kind of culture change metrics that we're going to be working with. But it would be great to hear um, a little bit more from the group. Uh, if anybody wants to put into the chat any particular uh, culture change tools that they uh, really value, we'd love to hear about those. Um, so I'll just give um, our audience a little bit of time to reflect on that. But I'm, I'm also aware in the meantime that we've had a, a question from uh, Jean Craig. 
um, who's told us that she's working with people applying for research funding, including fellowship applicants, many of whom are implementation uh, interested in implementation research. Um, and so she's interested in seeing whether it would be appropriate to refer them to the Innovation Hub to discuss potential opportunities for support and supervision, um, and perhaps gaining some experience on co-production and training, Patrick and Adam. In short, absolutely. We're we're very, very keen to hear from anyone who's looking to collaborate with the hub. Um, and anyone who can who can bring their own expertise with respect to co-production and training that we can learn from that approach. We're, we're very interested in sharing best practice and also learning from best practice across our region and partners. So very, very happy to have those conversations and see where potential synergies and overlaps may be. Adam, um, can you just drop the Innovation Hub email address in the chat and any inquiries in terms of, of working together and collaborations, if you just email the, the address that Adam will share, then we'll definitely get back to you on that. Absolutely. And I guess on the co-production note, we were just talking before we came on the call that there are two other co-production initiatives um, that UEA colleagues are involved in. So the first is the Citizens Academy, which is launching on the 3rd of May at the Forum in Norwich and is open to the public to come along to. And that's led by Professor Caitlin Notley. And we're looking forward to welcoming health and social care practitioners, policy makers, innovation experts and the public along to that. Um, and we also have the Norwich Institute for Healthy Aging, or abbreviated as NIHA, which is doing a lot of work in um, Norfolk in particular, uh, in a, a small group called Co-Production Norfolk, which is working with uh, the charities and voluntary sector organisations to get them more involved and engaged in research um, and innovation. And of course, the ARC East of England is doing a lot of work with social care and public health experts as well at the minute. So there are lots of initiatives happening. Um, and I think, as Patrick says, the complexity of this can't be uh, underestimated, really, can it? And there are going to be an awful lot of activities happening um, at a local level. So I think to actually capture the richness of that complexity and those people's stories and journeys um, then that offers opportunities for people to perhaps come and work with us quite entrepreneurially, doesn't it? Doesn't mean to say we necessarily have money because we have we haven't, um, but it it does mean that it offers opportunities for people to maybe come and buddy with us and work alongside us. Absolutely, I I very much second that. I think we're as as we mentioned in the on the call we're a small core team and we're really looking to leverage partnerships and collaborations as much as possible to drive this ambitious vision of supporting the implementation of of innovation across the healthcare system and also understanding the factors that go into it um so very much encourage and, and support any potential collaborations that's brilliant and james has just put into the chat that both himself and mark manning a part of the future system team at WSFT coordinating the new hospital build. So they're committed to co-production and have been doing that for quite some time. So James, can I ask you and Mark to connect with Patrick and Adam um, outside the webinar and um, maybe start some of those discussions? Um, we're actually producing um, today in Australia, actually one of my colleagues, Professor Kim Manley is um, presenting a keynote address on co-production and person-centred practice in um, Wollongong in Sydney actually and uh, so there is a global manifesto that's been produced about the principles for uh, co-production um, so you are more than welcome to use those as well they've been published in a, a big international textbook so the more people that use them the better um, that would be fantastic. So both James and Mark have uh, responded to say they'll touch base. Um, and we would welcome all our colleagues that are here on the call today uh, who are going to be measuring culture change to get in touch with us. Um, because the more heads that we have on this, the better. Perhaps we can try different approaches and maybe compare and contrast what that might look like. 
Um, we have got in the impact research group on the YouTube channel, there are some previous uh, webinars about culture change that people can access to find out about the theoretical principles that we've mentioned um, today. So they'd be more than welcome. And Emily's kindly posted that up into the chat as well. Um, but Adam and Patrick, I mean, what are the most pressing priorities for yourselves in terms of the next couple of months of activity? I think in many ways we've, we've touched on a, a number of those priorities. Firstly, it's making sure that we understand how we will evaluate the activities of the hub um, and make sure that the baselining work that we've conducted is appropriate and that we have all of the data to, that we need to understand what the current status quo for innovation adoption is. The past few months have really focused on establishing our core groups so getting our citizen group in place getting our adopters network in place those groups are, are critical in making sure that we can deliver our activities in line with the co-production agenda that we've set so centrally to the hub the next month or so will be focused primarily on the needs identification piece we want to be able to come out of april and may with a strong understanding of the clinical areas that drive health inequality across Cambridge and Peterborough and those that are also suitable for implementing innovation and addressing through innovation. Health inequalities, as I'm sure everybody on the call is aware, are very, very complex. They are multifactorial. We can't necessarily improve all aspects of health inequality by introducing innovation. So going through that co-production work with clinicians, with citizens to understand what the key health inequalities are and which of those are appropriately addressed through innovation. Gaining that understanding over the next few months is really our priority so that we can then go work with the Academic Health Science Network to identify our key target innovations and then actually start in the process of, of supporting the implementation in the front line. Thank you very much, Patrick. We've had a really good question from uh, Jonathan Clemo, who was asking about the launch event. So we've been referring um, in our presentation to it was the launch event for the four innovation uh, hubs getting together, wasn't it, with the innovation support unit. Um, but I wonder if we could perhaps just reassure people about what the opportunities might be to uh, network with the hub going forwards. I know you had that great slide at the start about the range of different activities that you're going to be involved in and touch points for people to connect. Um, but you might just want to say a few words about that. Absolutely. Um, so, Jonathan, as Carrie mentioned, the launch event was between the four hubs within the Adopting Innovation program took place last week. I believe that recordings from that session will be made more, more widely available through the Health Foundation once those have been edited and I'm sure we can communicate that through this forum as well when that's up and running. In terms of touch points that are out there, for those people who are interested in joining the Citizen Participation Group, that is an ongoing open call for members, so if that's something that's of interest, um, please do consider that application, as well as the Adopters Network. If you're somebody with lived experience of supporting implementation of innovation, we'd, we'd love to hear from you and we meet on a, on a monthly basis within that forum. Um, we will be through the Culture Club conducting a number of different webinars and workshops. So for example, as we mentioned, um, one of our provider partner organizations has asked for a masterclass on practical guidance for evaluating individual programs and that's something that we'll speak with our partners and impact about how we might deliver those types of workshops we will be communicating those through our twitter account and also through our website as those events launch and if there are any types of webinars that you would be keen to be part of if there's anything that you think that we could address in terms of culture and you have ideas we're very very open to suggestions so again if you just send an email to the address that's been posted in the chat um, we can have a conversation about the types of sand pits and workshops that might be interesting to people. That's great Patrick and you've just reminded me we have got a hashtag haven't we to drop into um, the chat Adam um, so that that would be useful for people to be able to follow because that's going to be the quickest way to find out about events isn't it um, and then Absolutely. 
at UEA we'll try you know once we know that these things are happening we'll also put those out through various social media channels as well and connect everything in together so we're trying to get the widest reach possible and also through the innovation support unit um, because they're very helpful aren't they in terms Absolutely. of disseminating very yeah I think the the important takeaway is the launch of this program was in February we're still a very early stage of the program and as a result, our thinking and our approaches are very much in development. So we're we're very keen to hear from people with experience on the call who might have suggestions in terms of best practice. Um, we're always looking for for methods to collaborate across the region. So open to open to communication and to conversations with all of you to make sure that we're delivering the the highest quality support that we can. That's brilliant. Thank you. And Adam's dropped the Twitter handle uh, into the chat. Uh, Emily's put in your uh, email address just in case it got lost in the chat room. Um, and uh, we will obviously edit the film from the webinar today. And then ordinarily what happens is that goes up onto the Impact Research Group YouTube channel very quickly. Um, and Emily will be in touch with everybody that's on the uh, mailing list that's joined us today to give you the link directly to that so that you can uh, join it um, and, uh, and watch again and perhaps connect to some of the other um, films that are up there. Um, we've had some lovely comments, lovely, nice comment from Peter Jones. Thank you, Peter. Great webinar and introduction to the hub. Thank you. Uh, I'm looking forward to sharing the recording. That's great. So please do share this recording, folks, once you get it uh, with people in your networks. I'm just double checking that we have addressed all of the uh, questions that we've been asked in the chat. I think we have, and we very helpfully I think, put all of the links in to the chat box um, that link you into broader either publications uh, and Kit Codling has said, good luck. Thank you very much, Kit. That's very kind of you. Um, uh, and Jonathan, thank you. You've made a comment that the Citizens Academy doesn't have a, a web page yet. I've seen it in draft. It looks very good. Um, but as soon as it's uh, about to be launched, I'm sure Emily will send that over to you. So I think without further ado, um, Adam, is there anything that you would like to conclude with? Anything you'd like to say? Uh, no, just just obviously a massive thanks for everyone attending today. And just to echo what Patrick is, was saying earlier on about um, the fact that the programme and the hub itself is very much in its infancy. So, you know, we'd absolutely want to reach out to as many people as we can to get that um, principle of shared learning um, across all of our partners. So if anyone has got uh, information, expertise and experience, then yeah, absolutely get in touch. Send us an email. That's lovely, Adam. Thank you. And it's a, a real privilege for me to be part of this journey with you all because um, you're just such genuine, authentic people and you live your values in practice so that there is an authentic contribution to co-production, which is really fantastic. And now, of course, I'm going to do a shameless plug to the next webinar that the Impact Research Group are going to be leading, which we think is the 24th of May. We will confirm that next week. And that's going to be focused on co-production, um, on uh, co-production and a focus on what matters most to people. How do you do it authentically? So we are going to be looking at different methodologies and tools for achieving that. We will have Caitlin Notley here from the Citizens Academy. We'll also look at some work that we're doing around global challenge for health at UEA and we'll look at research into co-production as well. So hopefully you can all come along to that and we look forward to um, seeing you all then. So for now, a massive thank you to Patrick and to Adam for taking the time this morning, to Emily as ever for doing all the fantastic background chat and links, um, and to all our colleagues on the call for taking your time to come along and join us. Thank you so much. You're all um, free to go.